Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about SNMP, which is the Simple Network Management Protocol. It's an open standard for network monitoring, and you'll see it being used on nearly all vendors' devices, not just routers and switches, servers, everything else as well. The terminology for SNMP, there is an SNMP manager, which is the SNMP server, and it can collect and organize information from an SNMP agent, which is SNMP software, which runs on managed devices such as routers and switches. So that's the official terminology, but real world, you won't hear people talking about SNMP manager and SNMP agent. The manager will be called an SNMP server, or an NMS system is commonly used, which is network management system. And the managed device is just an SNMP managed device. The SNMP manager of a server can pull information from the device with a get command, or the device can push it to the server with a trap. So for example, the manager could query to get traffic statistics from the device, or the device could report an, S an, an HSRP state change. For example, if one of the routers in an HSRP pair went down, the router could push a notification, push a trap to the NMS server about that. The standard also includes support for modifying agent information from the SNMP manager to change device behavior, but that's not used so commonly. So most often the NMS server will pull information from the devices or the devices will send a trap to notify the SNMP manager that something happened. There is an MIB is used as the database for the information. Data variables on SNMP managed systems, for example, the state of an interface, of this, or the state of OSPF or RIP, etc. Those variables are organized into an MIB, the Management Information Base, which is the database of things that you can gather information about on your different devices. The SNMP manager and agent need to share the MIB so they know which variables can be reported on. And different types of devices will have different MIBs because the kind of information you would want to gather from a Windows server would be different than the type of information you would gather from a router or a switch. So this diagram shows the architecture. We've got the SNMP manager, which is our NMS server. And in the example, there's a couple of managed devices and they're both running the SNMP agent software. So we've got a switch and a router. They've got MIB, which includes variables that are relevant to that type of device. The SNMP manager understands the MIB as well. And the SNMP manager can send queries to the devices to gather information from them. The devices can also send trap notifications to notify the SNMP manager that something happened. Also, you've got that third option where the SNMP manager can actually push and change information on the devices, not used as commonly. With the SNMP versions, there's been three major versions. The first version was SNMP version one. That uses plain text authentication between the manager and the agent. So the authentication is not encrypted. Anybody can read it if they're sniffing that traffic. The method that is used for the authentication is community strings, which act like a password. SNMP version 2C also uses plain text community strings for the authentication. The main advantage of version 2C over version 1 is that it supports bulk retrieval. So rather than having to send a new message for every piece of information it wants to get, it can send a request for multiple pieces of information at the same time. It makes it more efficient. And the latest version is SNMP version 3. It does support strong authentication and encryption with the use of usernames and passwords. 
it is the preferred version because it is secure but it's not supported on all devices you'll find a lot of devices that are still out there today don't have support for snmp version 3 yet so in that case you would have to use snmp version 2c if you did want to enable snmp so talking about the authentication in version 1 and version 2c it uses community strings rather than the normal username and password that you're used to so the community string is used to authenticate the snmp manager and the agent to each other it acts just like a password and the same community string value has to be set on both the agent and the manager that's how they authenticate to each other there is both read-only and read-write community strings the read-only community is used by the manager to read information and the read-write community is used if it wants to set information so here's a configuration example and for the ccna exam this is the same with syslog as well you don't need to know how to set up the syslog server or the snmp server because there's lots of different vendors that offer software products for that that's obviously out of scope for the exam the exam is testing you on how to configure the cisco router and switches not any external software so this is how we would configure the configuration on a router for snmp v2 first up we say it global config snmp server contact neil at flatbox.com my email address then snmp server location flatbox lab so that's just purely informational and it's optional if you want to set that but your snmp server is going to be monitoring lots of different devices so it's good if you've got some descriptive information about the device that will be sent to the manager next part of the config is our community strings which are used for the authentication and we're configuring both a read-only and a read-write community string we've got snmp server community flatbox1 which is what we're using as our read-only string and snmp server community flatbox2 which we're going to use as the read-write string then we need to configure where our snmp server is so we say snmp server host 10.0.0.100 is where the server is and for communicating with that server when we're sending traps we're going to use our read-only community string which was flatbox1 then we put in a command to actually send traps to that server this is optional if we did not have the snmp server enable traps config command the server would still be able to query this router to pull information from it but because we're configuring traps we're also going to push information to the server as well you'll see when we do the lab demo that there's lots of different types of traps that you can send so you can send information about a change in the ospf state a change in the state of an interface etc here we're doing traps config which means whenever anybody else goes to global configuration by entering the config t command it's going to send a notification about that to the server okay last thing to tell you here is some snmp security best practice we said before the snmp it's an open standard it's supported by nearly all vendors devices most devices will use a default read-only community string of public and a default read-write community string of private and attackers can use this to read or set information on your devices if an attacker has got ip connectivity to the device and it's been set up with snmp enabled using the default community strings of public and private then the attacker can use that to pull information about the device there's likely to be sensitive information there that they can then use to launch an attack against your devices so you do not want to leave that as the default setting best practice is to disable snmp on devices if it's not being used and if you do want to use snmp use snmp version 3 with secure passwords because that is a secure way of implementing it however quite likely you will have devices that do not support version 3 so in that case use snmp version 2c but use non-default community strings don't use public and private okay that was it for snmp see you in the next lecture thanks for watching if you'd like to get the complete course ad free 
right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.